Hello there, Discount We Levian here. My physical counterpart is still dealing with Bertha's sizable baggage. That wasn't a fat joke, don't cancel me. Anyway, I'll keep it short and sweet for you all. Ribena Racing, Arsic. Ferrari, Arsic. Mercedes Engines, Arsic as Parrots. Six failures in five races is a hilariously horrendous statistic. Hopefully they fix that soon. That concludes this abridged paddock pass. I now hand you over to the sexiest most handsomest man in the entire omniverse. Let's go. Thank you wheel. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Spanish Grand Prix weekend. We enter the European phase of the season. Will we see some action on the horizon? Or will service be resumed as it was before? Don't miss it. It is time for qualifying. G'day there, you sweaty chickens. Welcome back to my team on this wonderful channel, on this wonderful day. Apart from the fact that my air upgrade failed, you know, angry it makes me. Despite the fact that our R&D team consists of sea lions, we'll ignore that into turn one. We get it crossed up on the sausage, though. Oh, dear, that's not the first time that's happened to us this season. We get too excitable, cut that sausage, and it's cost us dearly. However, we keep a tight line into turn number three, try and not lose too much time. Only a tenth of our teammate, which is all right. Not a, not a horrendous start, so we'll come up to the hairpin. See if we can gain some more time, breaking nice and late. We do hit the apex this time. Suddenly, there's a bit of optimism creeping in. I'm, I'm sniffing an opportunity here through this section. Probably my best section, my strongest section of the track. Through the chicane, one curb, two curb, and on the outside, get the power down. Hog, there, hug that hog. Hug that apex nice and tight across the line. Okay. Okay, you know what? It's not bad. P13 to start off. The news becomes increasingly more positive because we're only just behind Esteban Ocon's Alpine and Norris's McLaren. And Wheel is right. Our chassis is f***ing dreadful. We have the chassis capabilities of a beaver, but we're not going to let that deter us. We are optimistic, we are fruitious, and we are going to triumph here at Catalonia. We go inside Sebastian Vettel. Not the first time, eh? Out of the pits, and Sebastian's going really slowly. So we overtake him out of the pit exit. We do a china on him. And now, we are well set to pull away and start our lap clean. Bad news, ladies and gentlemen. Vettel kept up with... Oh, my God. What was that? Vocal garbling gremlins aside into turn one. We need to miss the sausage, and we do. And we gain a ridiculous amount of time. That's two temps, nearly three temps already. We've got a lot of understeer. I wish we had that upgrade uh anyway we're going down to turn number four breaking at the 50 meter board the car just throw it in hope the front sticks and it does three and a half tenths up this is some fantastic time game into the hairpin breaking a bit later gaining time on the brakes losing it at the apex but that later apex actually gets us that same amount of time gain so nothing really happens but look at that look at how annoying that is vettel and stroll pikeying my slipstream all the way through the lap but into my favorite section believe me they were nowhere near me so we have definitely pipped Aston Martin in this qualifier. We're down to 17th. Uh, that's not great. However, we're 4.2 temps up. And this could be very interesting across the line. It's a significant gain. And we're going to revel in the glorious success of our... Oh, for f***'s sake. I can tell why you're shocked. And no, it's not just because of my terrible qualifying. But also, Carlos Sainz takes pole position at his home race. He pips his teammate, who has looked imperious for the past couple of races. I don't know how the hell he's done that. But anyway, um, the, the order's looking pretty grim. Mick Schumacher's P9. Lando Norris, P8. In a, what Cal Pole has he been on? Nevertheless, here's the grim situation. We Matt, 2 on 2. Now is not the time. Stop recording career mode part 704. P15 and P18 for the team. Really not good enough at all. I mean, at the end of the day, Oscar did pretty well to even get his car P18 and be remotely in the same ballpark as us. We were so, we we're just shy of beating the McLaren of Daniel Ricciardo. That would have been a confidence boost at least because their chassis has looked really quick recently. But that's not to be. It's P15 for the race. Can I also just say, I forgot to mention, Mercedes 3 and 4. They've turned up all of a sudden. Red Bull need to pull their socks up, or in this case, their... I was going to say, I was going to say the wrong L word. What's... Lederhosen, that's it. Not the... <laughs> Before I get financially fisted by YouTube... Uh, not that I make money from this anyway. Alonso P6 split up the Red Bulls. Really well done from him. He's looked really strong as well. We saw in last race in Miami, he was challenging the Mercedes. But for us, we know our race pace is quicker. We know we can capitalize off the start, just as we did in Miami. 
but with a chassis like ours, I mean, look at that. That is absolutely appalling. You might as well put a JCB on the track. But let's hold our heads high. Let's go get some points. It's time for the race. Welcome then to what promises to be another fascinating Spanish Grand Prix, a race which saw Max Verstappen take victory on his first ever appearance with the Red Bull team in 2016 after the dramatic coming together of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Will we see more moments for the scrapbook here today? It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position. Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Hamilton, Russell, Max Verstappen, and Fernando Alonso. Perez, Norris, Mick Schumacher, and Valtteri Bottas. Ocon, Joe, Kevin Magnussen, and Ricardo. Bombshell, Sonoda, Pierre Gasly, and Oscar Piastri. Albon, Vettel, Latifi, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. <coughs> what? What? Are you kidding? What? Well, where, where's, where's Ant or... Nah. Pinko! I just broke my back, ladies and gentlemen, from carrying the pre-race chat. Let's have a look at the race strategy for today's race. As you can see, I've started on mediums. We're going on to hards on lap number 14 all the way to the end of the race. Just a one stop for us today, unless we see a trick safety car come out, in which case that could really help us to maximise our result. By the way, interesting detail. Both the McLarens and some of the front runners are starting on soft tyres. So be on the lookout for them because they could do some stonking progress. And we've played it safe this time. It did. We, based on our personalised strategy, we could well have gone on softs. There's no reason why we couldn't have. But I chose not to because we know what happened at Australia and I don't want to repeat that song and dance ever again. Pretty much. Parking up on the grid then in P number 15. We're going to burn out the tyres, get the heat into them. 0.2 metres out from our grid slot. Oi, oi, oi. That is beautiful. And now we just sit and wait. Not too many cars to turn up now. The five red lights are coming on for the Spanish Grand Prix. Lights out and away we go in Espanol. And it is a decent start at first, but we get some wheel spin in the second phase. A bit too happy on the battery, but we keep up nicely with the medium runners ahead. Replay cameras in the top right, ladies and gentlemen. We've had a budget increase, if you couldn't tell. Round the outside of Magnussen and Ricardo. That is fantastic from us. Up into P13 already, making the most of lap one squabbles. Ocon gets squeezed out by Guan Yu Zhou. We take the position from him. Schumacher got frisky on the exit of turn three. Down the inside of him and Guan Yu Zhou. We're into the points already in this race. Fantastic start from us. And now we can set our sights up ahead with our glorious race pace that we seem to always have. Hopefully with our chassis gremlins, we won't have too many problems. P10 already. We're in contention for points in this race. Well, one point. But still, one point is 100% better than no points. Some wheelie good knowledge and wheelie good maths. Do you really want me to... St okay, fine. Schumacher thought about going for a move. We shut that door on him. But he is sniffing around our rear like a rabid Rottweiler. And we are really in trouble, as it turns out. Bottas getting away so far. That's not good news at all. So we'd better get a jiggy on. Oh, dear. Right, it's not going well. We got a whole truckload of understeer into that corner. Schumacher has not got off sniffing our rear since the beginning of this race. Since we overtook him at the fourth corner of the race, he's been all over us. And we are, we are in trouble, honestly. Our chassis hasn't been great at all, despite how strong we are through this section. That seems to be the only section we're actually strong at. The rest of the time, the car understeers out of control. Sainz staking a claim at the front of the field. Look how far ahead he is. And Mercedes is up into second. Unbelievable effort. We set a 121-1. We are two seconds off a of Ferrari, which is where we should be, honestly. So... I can't really complain. I've got bigger things to complain about. Schumacher going for a move into turn one. We pinch him to the apex, though. And he loses a whole heap of time. And so, we do stay in the points for now. I don't know what's happened to us this race. We've fallen like a brick ever since we left the USA. Uh, maybe the gravity's different in Spain, but I have other theories. Mainly our chassis. I thought Miami exhi exhibited 
similar characteristics to this track, but it turns out I was very, very mistaken as Schumacher in a hungry ass is behind us once again, but we say no to the chomping car. And through turn one and two, we're fine. But through turn three, a brief loss of the rear end. And it was just enough to make the car understeer into Narnia as the grip balance changed. And Schumacher's all over the back. And he hits us. What? Schumacher going for a gap that was always going to close and was not going to exist after that. Bats us out of the way, essentially. You all saw that. I didn't think. I mean, look at this mirror shot. I don't think he was even close to being enough alongside us to even have the audacity of making that move. But I can't complain. No matter how much I complain, it doesn't change the fact he's overtaken us and he's P10. And based on that gap change, he hasn't even got damage, which is a f***ing joke. And Ricardo is now all over the back of us. And worse news, he's on softs. Sh Call me Cardi B because all I do is swear in my bars. Uh, through this corner here, Ricardo actually lost quite a lot of time to us on this lap. Not really sure how, but I'll take it because... We are propelling ourselves out of his grasp, thanks to the DRS of Mick Schumacher. So while he did hit us out of the way, and I'm still very peeved off about it, uh, he is propelling us along. So that's um, I'm less angry about the entire thing, although he is a very stupid man. Through the chicane we go, and all we need to do is ensure we stay in his DRS, and that way, Ricardo cannot catch us. Well, let's see if we can execute the plan onto the end of lap number six, and Schumacher's outside of a second. But luckily, we were just inside the DRS at the detection point. So we're going to use that. I feel like we've really underused our battery this race. I, I need to stop thinking about that and think about defending from the Australian. Because our world's about to be turned upside down. But not if we have anything to say about it. We chop that opportunity out of the way. Remain in P11. And that's okay. I feel like there's still plenty of opportunity to do good in this race from P11. We go a bit wide. Ricardo, nowhere near us into turn four. He's going to dive down the inside. And that is another hit. From an AI car, Ricardo bats us out of the way once again. Our vehicle's fine, but we've lost so much time to Schumacher. And Ricardo, I'll be even more shocked if he doesn't have front wing damage. That was juvenile. That was barbaric. I cannot believe what I've just seen. From P11, Ricardo takes us out and robs us of our position. Ricardo ahead. Okay, they're on old softs. Their tyres are six laps old. We think they've got one more soft. Our ahead has some front wing damage, but it's not losing too much pace yet. Just be aware. Well, good f***ing riddance to the man who's upside down and frowning now. Daniel Ricciardo, after a completely senile attempt, I don't even know what he was thinking inside his quarter of a brain cell. But unfortunately for him, he's got damage, or rather not unfortunately, because he deserves every single bit of it. And luckily, I wish he stayed out in a way so we could hold up the cars behind us, but we will get a helping hand of DRS at least and use that battery. But that's allowed Guan Yu Zhou and Ocon to now be on the back of us. Zhou was outside of a second and outside of DRS and not even a threat in this race. But thanks to Ricardo's extremist maneuver, it's changed the complexion of our race. Just like my skin when I was 15, it's dotted with all kinds of unpleasant affairs. Oh my god. Sorry, I've recovered from fourth degree pneumonia. The tyre situation is particularly grotesque. We're already up to 35% on the rear left, and we've got five laps until our pit window. Through this section, we are still strong, though, and we do get away a tiny bit. We're six and a half tenths ahead of Guan Yu Zhou, or Zhou Guan Yu, or however you want to say it. I think the correct and polite way is Zhou Guan Yu. I might change it based on that, but the point is, he's got DRS now. There's people pitting. We're in the points again. Okay. Hamilton pit, and I think someone else did as well. Obviously, Ricardo did earlier. Show go for a move. We block it off, and now Sainz is ahead of us, and we need to try and get past him, put a car in between ourselves and the Alfa Romeo, make the most of this opportunity, but we just do not have the grip through turn three. Even on cold tyres, that Ferrari is finessing us to kingdom come through turn number four. Do we have the grip? No, we don't. Now the tyres are starting to activate for the Ferrari. How is tyres activating that quickly, by the way? Has he taken steroids? Science's steroid siesta aside, our provisional Grand Prix leader is getting away from us on cold hards. Our car really does not have the pace this weekend. We were fighting with a Mercedes last weekend. We've had a really rude awakening round Europe. We are really not on the pace, and now it's our job to defend, defend, defend from Joe. 
Onto a new lap. Here's Guan Yu Zhou with DRS on us, but Ocon is even closer to him. Maybe might make a move into turn number one. However, here's the situation of our race. It's the beginning of the next lap, in fact. I really cannot keep up with this race at all, but I think that's just because I've been traumatized by two previous incidents. Sites absolutely gaps us for centuries to come during turn number three, and he's gone. He's gone. The, the prospect of a Ferrari battle was never there to begin with. That's why I never got excited. So, through the last section of the track once again, can we get out of the DRS of the Alfa Romeo? Eight tenths. A second. Yes. No. We can't get out of DRS. We go wide into the last corner. Joe does have DRS, unfortunately, and that's going to hamper us as we carry on. You might be thinking, well, it can't be that bad, surely, as we go wider than a man. Um, the reason why it's bad is because during the first section now, Joe can keep up. If he didn't have DRS, there's a chance I could keep out of DRS on the next lap and then carry on from there. But unfortunately, not to be. During this last section, I do get away a little bit, but it's not nearly enough to justify not having DRS. But not justify is not the right word. Look at our choo-choo train. Unbelievable. As we look at a replay over here, my pedal is it. <coughs> Brake pedal aside, the plan is to keep on chipping away. It looks like we might have an issue. Hang in there. We're attempting to manage it. Ah. That's bad. Again, you're probably thinking it could just be a light problem, like the ERS problem we had in Australia. But remember, as Wheel correctly said in the paddock pass, Mercedes have had the most failures on the grid of anyone. And that, the creeping thought of pessimism that's coming into my head when I hear the words, we have an engine issue, just cannot be rid of. Hopefully, it's just a small issue and we can carry... Okay, we have a severe engine issue. Find a safe space no. to retire or return to the pits. No way. I repeat, find somewhere to retire the car immediately. It's too dangerous to stay on track. I can't believe it. I actually can't believe it. After all of the success we had, this race wasn't even the write-off. I would have been happy to stay P11 or P12, but not to be. Not to be. A seventh Mercedes power unit problem in six races. All the gender fluid female men at the factories need to do some explaining because this isn't good enough. It's a retirement and it's no points. Another Spanish Grand Prix is over then. And what a special race it was. Come our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. Well, in a Spanish Grand Prix full of surprises, it's Carlos Sainz that takes his first win in Formula 1, his first victory of the season, and beats out his teammate, Charles Leclerc. Unbelievable. Well done to Carlos in front of his adoring Spanish fans. He can now go off and have a... Paella. However, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Leclerc did get the fastest lap, though, so maybe that didn't tell the full story. The earlier stop for Sainz might have hampered his progress, despite everything. But in the end, it is a convincing victory. Oh my god, you are kidding. We were the only DNA- What happened to the AI? They were falling like diseased flies in the first races. What's going on? P22, no points. We, like I said, we could have been on pace for P11, P12, but we will never know unfortunately. Oscar had a terrible race as well. The eagle-eyed among you will have seen that um, he had to pit for a second time. He got front wing damage in the train that he was in and then he got and had to do another pit stop to change tyres. So he had an absolutely dreadful race. Very much a weekend to forget on our side. Um, elsewhere up and down the grid, we have been well and truly finessed. And it's not a good look for us. We really need to sort out engine gremlins and chassis gremlins because like i said this simply is not good enough and now here come the raft of things that really grind my gears about this whole process in the rivalry we lose ground we're still winning but just get lego head off my screen because i now as you can see lose a claim for something that wasn't my fault make it make sense we're almost at level 10 in the claim though, despite that debacle. We're almost in the ballpark of a new additional sponsor. Our penis-based team has really shafted themselves, let's be honest. No sponsor goal, because we f***ing blew up. And also, we lose damage deductions money. But it doesn't matter anyway, because we're running on funds drier than Amy Schumer's comedy. Oh, there's someone in the aero department injured themselves in the gym. You know what? Just 
if you're not going to build a good rear wing, build yourself a Zimmer frame at least. Because that would be more useful for you currently with the way you're going about things. Uh, here's Andrea, by the way, saying, Sorry you had to retire from the race, but sadly there was nothing else we could do at that point. We found out what's happened and we've given you resource points. And then why haven't you given me any fucking resource points, you stupid white chocolate cheese man? Of course it was the turbocharger. Just of, of course it was, of course. One of our new components, ladies and gentlemen, just to really put the cherry on top of this squashed, burnt, disheveled cake. It was, of course, it was the turbocharger, a component we fitted last race. 64 laps was all it took to break the f***er. Seriously, I mean, it's just been a terrible time. We moved down to ninth in the standings. Uh, we're joint with Haas and the constructors. Uh, which is, I mean, it still isn't bad, but, you know, it's annoying. And there's only one more thing to say, and that's to my power unit team. I see you there. Look, okay, I'll be nice, okay. <clears throat> Look, I know it's hard, okay. I know you're really, really trying your best. But you're not working hard enough. Every single one of you pisses me off. You, man. You, man. And you, lady. Oh, wait. Sh I don't think I can actually criticise him now. No, you know what? I don't care. This is my team. I make the rules. All of you are useless. You build a f engine on a school desk. Okay. I'm, I'm calm now. And I think, I think that'll be, I hope they're talking about something interesting, like, I don't know, making a better car, because that's what we need right now. Good, get back to work, people. I don't want any slacking anymore. We've been resting on our laurels ever since the Miami Grand Prix. We've been to Spain and we've got shown up. So, come the Monaco Grand Prix, the jewel in the calendar, we need to produce a sparkling display, build a gem of a car, and leave no stone unturned. Make sure you don't miss it. There could be an opportunity for a big surprise. Until that time, though, I will bid you good night once again. Thank you very much for watching a pretty unsuccessful episode of my team. You can't win them all, but that's fine. We'll come back stronger and we'll come back swinging if I can speak English. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed and also subscribe if you are new around here and want to see more. There will be plenty more my team, don't you worry. So to not miss that, hit the bell icon nice and hard. Just how I like it. My team playlist is in the top right. Please go and check out any episodes you haven't watched already. And if you have checked out all of them, then watch them again. Recommend them to your friends. Recommend them to your pets. Because it helps me out a great deal and I really, really heavily appreciate it. But, once again, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Goodbye!